Hey, Scuffed Roboticist here with episode 2 of the Catastrophe series. In the last episode, I covered all of the four-wheel drive verts I made before Catastrophe, so if you haven't already seen that episode, I recommend watching it so you'll get some context for this episode. First, I'll go over my thought process on Catastrophe's design, then I'll show off versions 1.1 to 1.8. So in episode 1, I showed y'all Endgame 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and Pandemic. All four of those bots were pretty decent, but they all had some really big issues that prevented them from becoming actually good and competitive robots. For example, Endgame's 1.0 and 3.0 lacked invertibility and reliable self-writing, and Endgame 2.0 had a self-writer, but it was super messy and the electronic layout was terrible. Pandemic solved most of the issues that Endgame had, but it had a really weak weapon, just like all three versions of Endgame. Before I made Pandemic, I started giving up on making four-wheel drive verts because I couldn't find a good way to make a durable four-wheel drive chassis with a decent weapon. But after Pandemic became a thing, I came up with some new building techniques that I would end up using in Catastrophe. In my mind, the optimal four-wheel drive vert would have reliable self-riding, a decent weapon, a bulletproof drivetrain, an extremely durable frame, and preferably some modularity. On September 5th, 2023, I turned those thoughts into reality. So this year is Catastrophe version 1.1. It's essentially the same as version 1.0, only difference being that the weapon tooth mount is a bit more durable. So I want you to think of Catastrophe as a hyper-buffed pandemic. It has a similar building style that I used in Pandemic, but the frame is a lot more durable, the drive system is a lot more durable, the front fork mounts are a lot more customizable and durable, and the weapon system is a lot stronger. So over here, we've got a 130 gram asymmetric bar spinner powered by a Buas motor with a 1 to 1.66 gear ratio on the torque port. So first thing you'll notice about the weapon is that it's five studs thick instead of the normal three stud thick weapons I ran on Endgame. And the reasoning behind this was because I couldn't pack enough weight into Endgame's weapons for them to get a good punch. So I decided to make the weapon slightly thicker so I could pack more weight into it. Uh, Catastrophe's weapon also actually has a tooth on it. Unlike Endgame's weapons, they all had rounded tips and it was absolutely atrocious. So for Catastrophe's weapon, I uh, decided to give it a contact tip so it would actually do some damage. So Catastrophe version 1.1 is powered by a Mold King 4.0 battery, which runs on 8.4 volts. The drive system is powered by two LEGO Power Function L motors, and the self-rider is powered by a LEGO Power Functions XL motor. So, over here, uh, you might notice that there's some like a strange wall in front of the battery, and the reason behind this wall was because the wires would pop off uh, anytime I got a big hit with Catastrophe during weapon testing. So I designed this big wall in front of the wires to prevent them from popping off on big hits because, you know, it's always nice to have your weapon in drive after a massive collision. So the fork mounts are a lot different than anything else I've tried before. So with Endgame's fork mounts, they were really brittle and they were really hard to replace. They were built into the robot. With Catastrophe, the fork mounts are built into this little sub-assembly right here that I could slot into the robot on this side and this side with pins. And then for this side, I just slotted it in with pins over here and an axle. So these fork mounts were easy to replace and they were a lot more durable. Um, and with Pandemic, I just had the forks pinned to the front wall um, and they would just fly off anytime they got hit by even the smallest spinner. So with Catastrophe, I didn't want that happening. So I made sure the fork mounts were like really in the robot and they were really well braced. So a common misconception that people have um, is that they think more armor equals more durable, and I'm just going to go out and say that is completely false. So more adding armor onto your robot does not directly make it more durable. You have to make sure that armor is actually braced to your robot instead of being attached with like pins or some other form of friction. So with Catastrophe, the quote-unquote armor um, is these four um, green frames at the front, which are part of the fork mounts, and these two... 3 by 19 wheel guards on the sides. So, yeah, Catastrophe doesn't have much armor on it, and it's still incredibly durable because I made sure every single connection point was well braced instead of throwing on a bunch of armor panels and praying to RNGesus that they would stay on during a fight. 
Catastrophe version 1.1 competed at Texas Brick Brawl Season 1, where it got first place with an 8-1 and record. So, so far, this robot was a massive success. It was way better than Endgame and Pandemic. And after uh, winning first, I immediately realized the potential that this robot had. So I decided to invest more time and effort into this thing to make it even more competitive. So next up, we've got Catastrophe version 1.2. This is post-Texas Brick Brawl Season 1. It's essentially the same thing as Catastrophe version 1.1, but it got a Booz 3 update. So instead of being powered by the old Multicane 4.0 on 8.4 volts, Catastrophe 1.2 is powered by a Booz 3 on 11.2 volts. So the dry motors were also swapped from Power Function L motors to Powered Up L motors since they're compatible with the Booz 3. And the self rider and weapon system are still the same. So yeah, not much changed with this version, just an electronics update. So here we've got Catastrophe version 1.3, and the first thing you'll notice is that it has a new weapon. So I still have the 130 gram asymmetric bar, but this is just a, another weapon option that I have. So this thing is powered off of the same gear ratio and uh, output as the 130 gram bar. And the next big change with this version was the wire wall. The wire wall got removed and it was swapped for these two little two by three bricks over here. So since there was only two power function wires on the Booz 3 instead of four on the Mold King, I uh, could save a lot more space and weight by just swapping over to these since I only had two wires to hold in place, not four, because these powered up plugs uh, like to stay in a lot more than the power function plugs. So I got about like 15 grams back from the wire wall, which was pretty nice. So, I never ended up using this disc in a fight because the teeth uh, cracked really quickly during weapon testing. I think I did like two minutes of weapon testing and half of the teeth already broke. So, uh, and the other half were cracked. So, I decided to not use this weapon during a fight because I would rather not have my weapon spontaneously combust after I hit something. So, here we have the next big milestone in Catastrophe's journey. This is version 1.4. So the last big milestone was version 1.1 that competed at Season 1 of Texas Brick Brawl. Version 1.4 competed at Season 2. So there's a new 80-gram asymmetric bar spinner uh, as a weapon option. I still have the 130-gram bar. The 80-gram bar spinner is uh, on a different weapon system than the bigger version. It's on 1 to 1.3, basically, on the fast port. So this thing is spinning much faster than the 130-gram big bar. Uh, but it packs very slightly less kinetic energy. It doesn't deliver as big of a hit as the big bar. But this thing was designed for weapon-to-weapon -weapon collisions. So after I did some test fights with Catastrophe version 1.3 against Black Ops, it didn't do very well. It didn't lose, but the fights weren't decisive enough because my weapon was a bigger diameter than Black Ops's. So it couldn't really do much, and it would lose most of the weapon-to-weapon -weapon collisions. So I decided to make this smaller bar spinner in preparation for uh, Black Ops and Impact, since they would both be competing at Season 2 of Texas Brick Brawl. So drive system, the exact same as uh, the previous versions. Uh, self Rider is still the same. Weapon system, uh, it has a new option. Uh, battery mount, or sorry, battery compartment still the same. Uh, but for front attachments... We have a new wedge and a new fork configuration. So this fork configuration over here has eight orange brick separators instead of the usual four. And now uh, the front armor is light blue instead of green. So the new wedge is basically a slightly smaller version of the uh, previous variant of the wedge. And it was lighter. And once again, I did not draw it in studio because getting all the angles right is absolute pain. Catastrophe version 1.4 competed at Texas Brick Brawl Season 2, where it got its second first place finish in a row, with an 8-0 undefeated record. So after this event, I immediately started preparing for Texas Brick Brawl Season 3. So here's Catastrophe version 1.5. This version competed at Texas Brick Brawl Season 3, where it got its third first place finish in a row, with another 8-0 undefeated record. So this version of Catastrophe saw weight reductions across the board, uh, including some changes to the self-writer and the weapon system. The self-writer was um, 
reduced in length from a beam 11 to a beam 7, just so it would look cooler from the side profile. But the reduced length made it self write unreliably, especially with the 130 gram big bar. I only tested the self writer out with the 80 gram short bar, and it was able to self write, but with the heavier bar, it couldn't, uh, it didn't have enough reach to fully self write the bot, and I almost lost a fight because of that. For the weapon system, I reduced the gear ratio from 1 to 1.66 to 1 to 1.3 because the Buwa's motor was not able to keep the 130 gram big bar spinning for an entire 2 minute fight. So with all of the weight reductions, I was able to run 8 orange brick separators with the 130 gram bar when before I was only able to run 4 with it. So those were all of the notable changes with this so version. Next up, we've got Catastrophe version 1.6 which came right after Texas Brick Brawl Season 3 in preparation for Texas Brick Brawl Season 4. So this thing didn't compete at Season 4, but it did some grudge matches there uh, to test out the different changes I made. So first thing you'll notice is that the self rider was increased in length from a, the previous Beam 7 to a Beam 9. So this was still shorter than the Beam 11 it used to use, but it was just long enough so it could self write reliably with the 130 gram big bar. Other than that, all of the changes were very minimal, uh, just for weight reduction. So the big bushings over here, the 3x3s, were swapped to these full bushings. And there was some added back armor over here to protect the wires because they kept falling out of the back. And other than that, there weren't really any other noticeable changes. Here we have the last big milestone in Catastrophe's journey so far. Version 1.7, which competed at Kerbal Season 3, where it got second place with a record of 6-2. and two. So, with this version of Catastrophe, there were so, so many changes. First, both weapons were reworked. So, the 80-gram short bar was increased from 80 grams to 110 grams, and it was given a second axle tip over here because the single one kept snapping. And the 130-gram big bar was swapped from a brick contact tip to a dual axle contact tip, which was more durable, and I didn't have to replace it that often. So the self-riders were still the same, the weapon systems were still the same, drive system still the same, but they had increased bottom armor, as you can see over here. So we have armor on the bottom for the battery, and then we've got some armor for the bottom of the self-writing mechanism and the weapon system on both robots. The reasoning behind it was I was afraid that I might self-write onto a vertical spinning weapon and they would catch the wires, which would not be good. So uh, for the other notable changes, I made a configuration for top attack bots. Where it was basically catastrophe, just without the self-writer, a ton of top armor and a disc weapon, which didn't work that well. And for the horizontal configuration, I uh, added in fork mounts on the version 1.4 wedges, uh, just in case I would have to fight Bruin, and I ended up fighting Bruin, so I'm glad I made those changes, because if I didn't put fork mounts in them, I would have lost that fight for sure. So, this version ended up doing really well. It didn't get first place, but it got second, and it only lost to one robot there. The battery clip was also reworked, that's something I forgot to mention. This Axle 12 kept sliding out that way, so I swapped the Beam 7 over here for two of these uh, Half Beam 5s with the axle holes on the ends. So now the battery clip would have to fall out of all of these axle holes, which had a lot of friction, so it wouldn't really happen as often. So those were all of the notable changes for Catastrophe 1.7. So here we have Catastrophe version 1.8. This is right after Kerbal Season 3, and it's the last version I made before uh, Catastrophe V2. So with this version of Catastrophe, I improved the mounting for the self-rider. I added this L-beam over here, which is braced into the new bottom armor on this side with the self-rider and the weapon motor. I made the bottom armor cheaper. And now the self-rider is braced to the bottom armor, so there's no way it will fall out again. In the finals for Kerbal, it fell out when Impact hit it at a super weird angle. So now this uh, L-beam will prevent that from ever happening again. So uh, other changes uh, were, of course, the cheaper bottom armor because I never got hit on the bottom side. And then for the last change, I got a new weapon option, this 180-gram asymmetric disc spinner. This is the first version of the disc. I went through so many iterations because the tooth kept snapping off, but this was the first iteration and it's the one that went with Catastrophe 1.8. Other than that, there weren't 
many other big changes with this version. So that's all I have to show for episode two. It looks like you guys really enjoy these types of showcase videos, so I'll definitely do some more of them in the future. Also, this won't be the last episode in this series. I'll be making a third episode in a couple weeks that'll showcase Catastrophe V2, so stay tuned for that. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.